Let's be positive. Come on. Let's be positive, mate. Come on. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. Positive. That's the name of this particular slot on the platform. Let's be positive. LBP with TMG. That's Twizel's Matt Gunn. We'll talk some more football Phoenix to come. And also, was that goal offside? Marcus Rashford <clears throat> helped Bruno score the equaliser for Man United against Man City yesterday. More on that, Tom Reed and so forth. But happy new year. Welcome back, mate. Happy new year to you, Martin. I hope you had a great break. I know you went away with your boys. That must have been fantastic. I just spent the... Christmas New Year period at home. I tried to isolate myself as much as I could. I went to the Kura race meeting. I won a trifecta and lost money on it. What? That sums up my Christmas. Okay. Well, I, I mean, look, as, as we get older, as, as, as refined gentlemen get older, I find that the time you have off, the days you have off, it's it's okay to do nothing, isn't it? What are you doing today? Nothing. I'm quite happy doing nothing. I like doing nothing. I'll sit and do nothing. I, I won't. I, I I I don't even have to do anything to do nothing. Do you know what I mean? Do you want to go to the rodeo today? No, too hot. I just want to sit here under the trees and do nothing. Nothing. In fact, I want to spend the morning. I want to spend the morning, probably up until lunchtime, just thinking about what I'm not going to do, <laughs> and then I'm not going to do it all afternoon. That's it. That was my holiday, and it was fantastic, actually. <laughs> Let's be positive. Kick it off with the Premier League. I mean, you be positive about your Liverpool, because someone has to be. All right, I'll quote the coach. I always like to quote the coach in a situation like this. One of the worst performances he's ever seen. Well, I bet it... <laughs> there's, there's not be anything else to say about that. Outplayed, outgunned, nil-nil, and then three-nil. I mean, if you're thinking we're in it at half time, you're mad. We go one nil downs early in the second, and it's all downhill from there. We were hopeless. Ten points behind, the season's over. I mean, what am I to look forward to? NRL. Yeah, that's it. That's what you're looking forward to. Yeah, Matt going out of trial to leave. Yeah, well, and we will talk about that today. Last year, the Australian government were deporting one of the world's most famous athletes. His name was Novak. He was deported because, oh, his entourage didn't fill the immigration form out correctly where it said, are you vaxxed? Simple simple yes or no box to tick that one, Matt. He's back this year. Who is more hated at the Australian Open? Is it Novak, the anti-vax, or is it Nick the Dick? Mate, this is so tight that you couldn't even separate it through the TAB, but I'm going to go with my mum. I'm going to go with mum. Uh... Kyrgios is a wanker, she said to me there during uh, late last year. And um, for a guy who is so good at a sport that has been so loved in Australia, it's amazing what he's done to himself, isn't it? You know, how do you become Australia's best tennis player and most (laughs) heavily disliked person sporting-wise? I mean, as much as you don't like Novak, and I've never been a big fan. Look, great tennis player, undeniable. But it's just always been something about him. Hasn't it? Early in his career, he, he he compared himself to Roger and Rafa and said, uh, he called himself one of the greats. And from that moment, I'm not even sure, it's 10 or 12 years ago, he was only a very young man at that stage. I thought, I don't like you. We get to say that. You don't get to say that about yourself. It's, I just feel uncomfortable about that, and I've never liked him since. But I'm going with Nick the Dick. Yeah. There's no two ways to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and, and you, know, you know, maybe if he won the Australian Open, maybe that might warm the public to him because Aussies like winners, winners are grinners and all of that kind of thing. But he just, the, the, you know, I, I just can't see him, A, doing that because I don't think he's actually got what it takes to win seven matches. He got to a Grand Slam final Wimbledon last year and then, of course, he lost to Novak and there are too many good players in that draw. But I also just, I, 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 you know, nothing has fundamentally changed for me since that Wimbledon tournament that says... You know, he can. He's look, he, 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 he just splits opinion. Look, my kids love him, mate. They think he's great. Oh, he's got a great attitude. He's great for the game, all of that kind of stuff. I said, the guy's just, he's just full of it and himself. And he's, and the, why would you, how could you like him? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how the younger generation do. Look, compare him with someone like Pat Cash or Pat Rafter, two Aussie greats who would have walked out onto that centre court and you wouldn't have been able to hear anything for 20 minutes. But you don't speak, Kyrgios. You know, I'm surprised he hasn't wanted to try and insert himself into that role. Yeah, 
you know, it, the greatest role in Australian tennis has been the number one male player. Look where Ash Barty went. Yeah. You know, look what tennis meant to the Australian public, and yet Kyrgios can't, he just can't get anyone to, to, to be sympathetic to him or really like him. And I, 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 honestly, I think most people watching the game hope for him to blow up now. Yeah, that's why you watch it. He is. He's a circus act. That's exactly. Yeah, I was actually because I was thinking, you know, Leighton Hewitt at the same. Come on, the Aussies. They love the battler. He's the poo. He's Mark Philippoussis, isn't he? Heart like a caraway seed. I think that's why they don't like him. I think because everyone looks at him, goes, "You had all this goddamn talent, and you're just such a twat that you never actually exploit it." And for whatever reason, and it's just for all of us who wish and wish we could climb that sporting tree. I look at him and I just think. I don't know, maybe you remind me too much myself. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe. I don't, maybe I don't maybe. like you because there's I am bit, you. There's a little bit of Nick the Dick in all of us, Mark. <laughs> I don't know if that came out the wrong way. I don't know if that came out the wrong way, but yeah. Look, you'd think he'd want it. You'd think he'd yeah. want it. And, yeah. and wouldn't he be more likely to win if he walked out there knowing they're all behind him? Well, it didn't you know, help, wouldn't it? things he goes on about, and a lack of support. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Um, let's be positive, mate, okay, because we've got rugby talk. league to talk about, and I want your prediction for the season right now. I want dogs. I want warriors. All right. Listen, what I'm going to say about the dogs is that I going into the season knowing that we have strengthened our squad, but I still believe we're rebuilding. I still believe we're a year away. That being said, a top eight position for us, if we are able to come together early enough, I think is a distinct possibility. Are we in the area of top four and grand final? No. Uh, I'll answer that now. I, I, I mean... No. Uh, well, you can answer No, that. you're not, mate. Don't even like go that. there, mate. It's I just embarrassing for you. Like. Stop it, mate. You're not, okay? I look at the Warriors the same thing, mate. If the Warriors make the top eight this year, that to me is a grand final win. Forget anything else. We're not even top four. We're not top six. We're playing for seventh and eighth with about six or seven other teams. That's reality. Yeah, and I think you've got to keep that in mind. Look, both of these teams have been average over the last few seasons. And should you expect that the Bulldogs finish 12th? I don't know, the, the, the Warriors were, what were they, 13th? Or, Something. Well, 14th. Whatever. Anyway, they were right in the same. We were right there knocking on each other's back window. Um, is it a realistic expectation to expect finals footy when you actually sit down and read back through what happened last year my answer would have to be no for both teams. Yeah, I think that if either team or both teams make a playoff, you're celebrating and yep. looking forward to yep. 2024, yep. hoping that nobody leaves your squad, hoping that nothing gets happened, hoping that nothing uh, big injury-wise comes up to key players. And, and that will be the key. But, yeah, look, really, realistically, maybe squeaking into the playoffs but probably not going any further than week one. That will be my guarantee. Look, I've looked at the Aussie TAB numbers. You wouldn't go near either team. You wouldn't go near either team based upon the so-called experts on uh, not giving money away. So I think we're probably in the ballpark. Maybe finals. That'll be a celebration. But 9-10 probably more likely.